Welcome to that thing with James. I'm your host, James, and I'm accompanied by a hangover. Hi. I am recording this as of October 31st, the year 2021. Yes, I am recording this on Halloween day of 2021. And last night, I went to a costume party uh, with my friend Brian. If you've been following the show, you know who he is. He's been on twice and he'll be back. And man, he was wearing a great, a great uh, Wilfred costume. Um, if you're not familiar, Wilfred was a show that used to be on, I think it might have been the IFC channel, but it was originally an Australian show. Um, and Wilfred is the name of a character who is, well, sort of a halfway imaginary friend. So the story follows uh, a young man who is like in his early 30s and just sort of keeps fucking up at life and and has a history of some mental health issues. And uh, he talks to his dog a lot. He has a dog and he's best friends with the dog. And the dog's name is Wilfred. Now, to everyone but the main person of the show, I forget his name. In the American version, he's played by Elijah Wood. And frankly, the American version of the show was better. And also, I just love Elijah Wood. When I lived in Austin, I always wanted to meet him. From the, like the, the first year I moved there, I found out very soon that he lived in Austin. And I actually, for the longest time, lived in the same neighborhood as him. I just never saw him. But I always, I always fantasized of us just sort of like randomly running into each other and then becoming best friends. I feel like Elijah would and I would get along. Elijah. Elijah. If you're watching this or hearing it, be my friend, please. You can contact me at my show email, that thing with James at gmail.com. And then you, dear uh, listener slash viewer, can email me as well if you have uh, um, comments, hopefully nice ones. Um, if you have a suggestion for a subject or story you would like me to cover on the show, if you are in need of advice that you would like me to give you on the show, and I will keep you anonymous. Or if you have a business inquiry, if uh, you want me as a guest, if you want to be a guest, hit me up at that thing with James at gmail.com and, you know, all that stuff. Well, anyway, I always wanted to be friends with Elijah Wood. And um, I know he's a gamer and all this stuff. And I mean, I wouldn't bug him too much about the Lord of the Rings stuff. I mean, I would eventually ask questions. But first off, you know, you got to play it cool when you meet someone new and you know something about them. You don't want to just jump right into the questions. You got to You've got layers to get through. See, in undergrad, I studied as a minor communication studies, which is... Uh, it's confusing. Different colleges teach communications classes, but um, some types of communications classes are more like communications and broadcasting, where basically you learn how to work in broadcasting, be it radio news, television, that sort of thing. Well, what I studied was more of the theory end. And it was actually, I, I started off because I just heard that it was a easy minor with easy classes, but it turned out to be the most interesting classes. I didn't have a single communication studies class that I didn't find immensely interesting. Now, due to my lack of maturity or... I, yeah, yeah, let's say lack of maturity at the time. N not that I was totally immature, but um, I was still, uh, I wasn't as mature as I, looking back, I wish I were. I wasn't mature enough to really get the best grades in undergrad, but nevertheless, same goes for grad school too. I was not mature enough yet, really. 
that aside, communication studies, you learn basically, um, I think the first class I took was interpersonal communication. And that just uh, studies, 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 uh, theories and research on how people uh, communicate with each other and sort of uh, as academia is wont to do, it sort of categorizes and labels different phenomena that happen when you are communicating with another person. And it's not to say that everything is all this way or all that way. It's just that um, being able to label this label certain types of uh, recurring phenomena and recognize patterns and stuff like that helps uh, the human brain to sort of process and understand and pick up more patterns, recognize more patterns in interpersonal communication and other types of communication. It doesn't necessarily have to be human to human, individual to individual or individual to group, so on and so forth. Um, and one of the first things you will learn in an interpersonal communications class is the onion. It's the onion theory. So the idea is like an onion, like Shrek. Uh, it, it's not the same as Shrek. Shrek was more talking about his, his personality and that sort of thing. Um, but the onion theory in interpersonal communication is that when you start off with the first layers, you talk about sort of surface stuff like the weather. Oh, hi, how are you? I like your shoes. What do you do for a living? Where do you live? That sort of thing. And as you peel back layers, you get more and more deep in the subject matter that you talk about, you know, asking what do you want to do with life? What kind of shoes do you want to wear? Where would you like to live? That sort of thing. And the closer and closer you go to the core of the on- go, <laughs> go to the core of the onion and like an onion, that's where the more pungent smells and juices come out that make you tear up. And as you get closer to the onion of conversation, of interpersonal communication, that's where you get to more root stuff, like the kind of stuff you would talk to a therapist about or a very trusted friend or loved one and or loved one. And um, in, in, in my fantasies of talking to Elijah, Elijah Wood, you know, I, I couldn't just jump straight into that stuff. I would have to say, first off, great selection of shirt, Mr. Wood. Uh, secondly, what was it like working with Vigo Mortensen? And third, will you be my friend? Uh, I forgot where I was going with that. But oh, yeah, yeah, Wilfred. The reason I brought up Wilfred is so Elijah Wood's character in the show um, talks to his dog and that dog just looks like a regular dog to everyone else. But to Elijah Wood, Elijah Wood's character, it looks like a 30, 40 something year old man who looks like a degenerate dressed in a gray shaggy. Well, not necessarily shaggy, but a gray floppy dog costume. And my friend Brian dressed as the dog Wilfred. He had the costume and he painted his nose black and uh, he even got the costume itself from FX. Oh, that's what the show was on. It was on FX, not IFC. He, he got it from the official Wilfred merchandise line on FX.com. So he was dressed as Wilfred. There were some pirate girls there, these like three really catty women who just wanted, they just wanted to be mean girls. And, and these are not just like your average, like, you know, mall, pink, juicy m- pants, mean girls. And these were uh, Renfair girls. Renfair girls that wanted to, you know, start shit. And they were just fucking belligerent and shrill and screaming. And it wasn't fun. But one of them had a great pirate costume and some very cool knives that were sharpened. I think she might have sharpened them herself. And I was impressed with it because, goddamn, they were sharp and very cool. It was uh, sort of like a, it was real metal knives, um, but it was sort of like a fake Damascus steel. Um, 
That is to say, it wasn't real Damascus steel, but it was forged in a way that the uh, the metal, the uh, just the look of the metal, looked like Damascus steel, which is very legendarily strong steel. Um, and so, I and Emily, we did not get but a 24 hour notice before the costume party. So I wasn't really, I didn't have time to plan. I didn't have time to really get a costume together. And Halloween's my favorite holiday every year. So I love dressing up. And so we did go out and just get some like black finger paint, black finger paints, nail polish black nail polish and uh, some other stuff and just kind of went gothed out, I guess. And uh, it was a good time. And I really didn't drink much at all, especially because I was driving. I hung out, you know, drank water before driving. But man, I think it's more so that I'm just tired, that I'm not used to that much energy and that that much like dopamine and serotonin coming out in a single night of like getting to be up around other people who are friends and playing games and that sort of thing. But it was a good time. It was a good time. And uh, today I'm just kind of a, a little worn out uh, in a in a fun kind of a way, not depressed. Um, but it's good. It was a good time. So uh, if you're watching this, that's why I'm dressed down right now. <laughs> Let's see. So this is just going to be kind of a shorter one. And I think the um, the Patreon episode is going to be a bit of a shorter one, too. I might talk about. Let's see. I want to read a little bit about um, Havana Syndrome, which is funny to me. And then this other subreddit that I found recently. I'm not sure which I'm going to talk about in this one and which I'm going to talk about in the uh, premium episode. But if you're not already a member of the Patreon, if you're not a patron already, consider becoming one because you get a, uh, a bonus episode every week. Although I do want to note real quick, I may have to be off next week because I'm going to have to leave town sometime soon uh, to do some pretty extensive manual labor. Um, so I, I'll try to record and get an episode, at least a, um, a premium episode out. But a fair warning, I think it might be next week I won't be able to get an episode out. Anyway, um, where was I going? Yeah, if you're not a member of Patreon, become a patron. Patreon.com slash that thing with James. It's only five dollars, five bucks, and you will get access to a new episode every week, plus the entire back catalog of all other previously recorded and released bonus episodes. It's good stuff, plus you get to support the show and uh, and it makes you feel good. Just five bucks at patreon.com slash that thing with James. You can also find me on social media at James J. Asher. And I have a subreddit r slash that thing with James. Business is over. Back to the show. Um, uh, in, in the last premium episode, I, I did a little bit of a confession. And uh, I, I don't know if it's necessarily a confession, but just sort of like bearing my heart a little. And I think I should probably do that on here too. Um, getting to the short of it, I don't know if I should continue doing this show, frankly. I don't, I don't want to stop doing the show. Let me put it like that. I want to continue doing the show. It's just, um, it takes a lot of time and I don't know if it's necessarily worth it anymore because I've, I've noticed that like the number of people who like watch and or listen to the show has dropped pretty drastically for um, quite a long period of time. Like it's uh, I've been holding off on making any, you know, analysis judgment calls on on how the show's doing. But I've noticed that this has been pretty consistent for enough time to cause me a little bit of a concern and wonder, am I doing something? Is, is, let me say, is there something 
I can do to improve this show? Do I need to have a niche? Um, is there something you, dear audience, would like from me? Um, is there like a, a structure you would like to see for the show? Is there something I've talked about uh, before or a few times before on the show that you want to hear more about? Uh, does it need to be more focused? That sort of thing. Um, I could really use some feedback. Um, I, I want to hear what you have to say. So if there's any suggestions or, or ways that uh, you think I could improve this show, um, let me know. Again, send me an email, that thing with James at gmail.com. Um, but yeah, that's been on my mind. And I've also just sort of, as I talked about in the premium episode last week, um, I've been having a rough time, not going to lie. Um, this week has finally been pretty good, but I've been going through like, um, some kind of depressive spells. I, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily depressed. Um, it's just, I'm still very much adjusting to this new life in a new town. Um, I had a lot of identity wrapped up in Austin and in my life in Austin. And with it ending so abruptly, uh, I, I kind of didn't get a lot of closure or a chance to get closure, I feel like. Um, and I've certainly tried to. I've certainly like tried to logic my way into saying, okay, here's what was working in my old life. Here's what wasn't working. Here's what I can do now, yada, yada, yada. Um, and this was all before I moved into this new space in which I am recording some several months ago. Um, I, you know, you make plans and then you get somewhere and all of a sudden all the plans just go right out the window. And I had a lot of ideas and plans for when I got here. And and then you have to start, you know, when you're moving into somewhere new. And especially, oh, hold on, I'll let this thing pass. It sounds like a life flight or something, maybe. Mm. You know, you make plans and then it comes time, you know, you're in the time and the place to enact those plans you had bouncing around in your head. But then when you get to the new place in this new time, you always find some new detail that you have to work out, like getting address changed and fucking everything. Moving is very stressful and it's even more stressful after you've gone through a fucking traumatic event that just like ran you out of your home took out a lot of your stuff, took out a lot of your relationships, a lot of your professional life. Um, it was a lot to process, and I think I'm still processing it. And I hope, I do hope, and I feel like I am, I do hope that I'm starting to adjust to my new life here in Tulsa, um, I'm getting to see friends a little more occasionally. I really, looking back, I didn't get to see friends that often in Austin. Um, and so that was one of the things I've wanted to change in my life is just getting to see and hang out with friends more often. And so far that seems to be happening in, in Tulsa. So I'm happy with that. But let me tell you, losing the just the option of getting to act on screen, even if it's just for a stupid fucking commercial, having the opportunity, you know, the chance that that could happen go away, that has been very difficult for me to deal with. And I'm still trying to figure out ways to cope with it. Um, because there's certainly not nearly as much film or television or a web series activity happening in Tulsa. Or if there is, 
I don't know about it. Now, I do know there's a theater scene here, for sure. Um, so that's probably something that I should probably look into, like put some time into. Actually, just earlier this week saw a, um, a, what is it, a post for an audition for a character that I would have been perfect for. Unfortunately, I saw this post a week late. And uh, so I, I did not get to audition for that. But just the option of, you know, maybe getting to audition. And frankly, that kind of went away before uh, the storm um, took out Emily and I's home uh, this past February. All that really has started up when the pandemic, like when the lockdowns started up in early 2020. So that's kind of been gone for a minute, but there was the hope sitting there in that small, shitty old apartment in, in, in Austin, there was the hope that maybe I would get an audition. Maybe I'd get called in. Maybe I could tape an audition and send it in. I don't even know if I'm able to do that here. Like I have no idea. Uh, if you have some advice or some tips or some leads, let me know. Otherwise, I've just been thinking about what are some ways that I myself can uh, supplement or, or fill in that vacuum in my life. Now, the problem is back in Austin, those, those jobs, they paid and they paid pretty damn well. If you could get a, if you could get a gig. And if I'm being honest, I was not getting a lot of gigs and I wasn't sure and I mean, it had been the better part of a decade. I wasn't sure if it was ever going to happen. And I'm not necessarily sure it had. I did get to do a lot of cool stuff. I certainly have had more luck in the, you know, in, in getting acting jobs um, than a lot of other actors. Um, I, I, I own that for sure. But it didn't really none of it really panned out the way I expected it to. And so that's sort of a something I've been trying to swallow too, that a bitter pill to swallow is, was I just treading water there or was things, or, or was something about to break? You never know. And that's the bitch of being an artist of any kind with aspirations to be able to do your creative work for a living and not necessarily just like commercials, commercial work or commercial art or commercial jingles if you're a musician. The bitch is that you always have to just like, wait, maybe this is going to be a big break. Maybe this is going to be a big break. That's the bitch of capitalism is that, while you're doing that, you're also torn between other jobs and just trying to fucking feed yourself and survive and probably not having health insurance. Um, I feel like if basic necessities were provided for uh, and, and if there were more avenues for artists to do art, which I personally feel is a very integral part to any society, um, Art is most necessarily, uh, art is necessary, I believe. As human beings, art is a necessary thing. But that's a long conversation for another time. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've been trying to just deal with like, it was, was something about to break there? But the chances were probably no. And I remember when I first moved to Austin, I thought I was just three years away from moving to Los Angeles. And, you know, because I've got a master's in theater and I got into a agency real quick and everything. I thought things were, I, I thought things were going to turn out a lot differently. Um, I was, turns out I was just, um, let's say naive uh, about the way things worked. You don't necessarily have to be the best. You just have to know the right people. And um, knowing the right people really is not up to you. That's purely luck. Uh, do the work. It's basically 
um, what is it? What is it? What is it? When the train arrives is not up to you, but you've got to be ready to hop on. And that's where you have to hone your craft and everything is have being able to, to deliver, being able to show up, but that door opening, that train arriving, that just that opportunity, that's a whole lot of luck and you can network and network and do all sorts of stuff that supposedly works for other fields. I'm, I, I, I'm sure networking is substantially easier in other quote unquote professional uh, career paths. But in terms of arts, especially for a fucking actor, especially for an actor, it is um, tough. It's very tough. And I don't know that things were ever going to break for me. I always wanted a big break. I do manifestation, journaling, that kind of shit. I've done all the fucking intentional, you know, uh, gratitude and all this stuff, morning pages, etc. I've done all that shit. Um, and certainly I've manifested other things, but like the big thing that I really wanted and still want to be quite honest. Um, I don't know if I was just deluding myself, if this was grandiose thinking, I have no idea. I have no idea. And because of the nature of the path I was slash am on, I haven't gotten on if, off it. I don't, I don't know if I can. Um, because of that, that path's nature, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, you really don't know. Um, necessarily. Or maybe you do. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm still just deluding myself. Whatever the case, I am still adjusting to my new life. And I'm still adjusting to continuing to do this show after losing that old life. Like, I feel like this is just yet another extension. Oh, another helicopter. Let's pause. So I guess what I was saying is I think maybe part of my issue with the show right now is that it is simply a, a tentacle on the octopus that is my life in this current chapter. I'm still adjusting. Things have changed a lot and I'm still trying to get my bearings and everyone, everyone, especially family, everyone's got a suggestion. Here's what you need to do. No, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to do. And I know I asked you to give some suggestions for possible what's working for the show, something I could do different, something I could do a little better. Um, I, I want that feedback, yes. But I'm talking more just like general life choices. Oh, here's what you need to do. Oh, well, it's time. It's time. You're 33. It's been a decade. And look at you. What have you done? I've lost my home. Well, well, it's time. You've had plenty of time. And this mess you're in, it's probably your fault. You should have prepared for the unpredictable. Yeah, I've, I've had to deal with some of that this year. <laughs> some. And, um... And that doesn't make adjusting to a new fucking life any easier. Um, so, yeah, it's been I've been having some challenges with the show because it takes a lot of time, especially because it's on video as well. It takes a lot of time to do. And I don't know if it's necessarily worth it. And that's kind of how I felt about staying in Austin and acting was, was it necessarily working or was I just spinning my wheels, wasting my time and energy, beating a dead horse? I don't, I don't know. I wish I had answers. Still getting comfortable. Sometimes I'm comfortable not knowing answers. Sometimes I'm not. I waffle between both options. Um, now, 
I say all that as I as I'm about to say, I also want to start a Twitch channel, which I, I do have a Twitch channel. Um, I've gotten very first steps done with the uh, <laughs> streaming software, excuse me, with the streaming software, I recently got a uh, device that could work with my uh, specific equipment so that I can stream video games because I don't have a PC. Unf I wish I did, but I don't have a PC, but I do have a game console. And um very good friend did a very generous thing to me several months ago this past spring uh they sent me a video game capture card an elgato hd 60s and i did not have uh, at the time my computer um I, I i had equipment that was old and wasn't strong enough to even just stream on its own without fucking with a video capture card and all that stuff. Um, but I have um, gotten some new equipment, but it did also require a new video game capture card. So I just got that. And what I'm saying is um, soon enough, I want to and will start uh, streaming on Twitch. I think my handle is like, it's twitch.tv slash yeah, that James, Y E H that James Y Y E A H that James. Yeah, whatever. I'm not going to give you a link yet because I'm not really doing anything with it other than just trying to figure it out. But hopefully that's something fun to do that I don't expect too much out of. Um, you know, I know exactly what I want for my life. Oh, yes, I do. And in terms of manifestation, that kind of talk, these are big things. And maybe, maybe, and I know, I know, I'm, I can logic shit to hell. I've got a fucking anxiety disorder, dude. I can logic shit to hell. But there's also the balance. There's the paradox of both logic and illogic. Another helicopter, man. People are just having heart attacks this Halloween. <laughs> so I think uh, <laughs> I think the Tulsa sheriff or whatever was right. People were sneaking their weed into Halloween candies. That never made sense to me that someone would waste their fucking drugs just to give it out to like kids. It's like no. Drugs can be pretty expensive. Like, you don't want to just give that shit out because you want to use it. Why would you just put it, go through the fucking trouble of putting drugs in candy and then just wasting it, giving it away to, like, to children of all fucking people? Like, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. But the Tulsa fucking pigs were like, oh, well, you got to watch out for fake candy uh, with weed in it, you know, that sort of thing. I don't think anyone's given that shit out. If it winds up in someone's bag, that was a mistake. The person who gave it out just got too stoned and mixed up which Reese's was the real one and which was the dank one. Um, anyway, um, where, where was I going with this? Video games, video games. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Uh, weird paradox is uh, logic and illogic. And uh, that's one of my favorite things to do is to accept paradoxes in life, in existence, in the mind, in the heart, in the soul. Um, and maybe, maybe, maybe my dreams will come true. Who knows? Who knows? If it's if we're working in the uh, the uh, logic of you know manifestation kind of stuff, bigger things take time because all these different uh, uh, infinite big intricate parts have to move around in a certain way for your your desire to manifest. Who knows? I'm not writing that off completely. All I'm saying is I'm impatient. And, uh, I, you know, I've got fears and I've got hopes and, uh, hopefully the hopes beat out the fears for sure. Anyway, I don't think I covered, I didn't cover Havana syndrome or anything. And I hope I mentioned at the top that this was going to be a shorter one because I'm hungover. I'm just like jazzed up on a monster energy right now.
So um, if you do want to hear about uh, Havana syndrome, which is a very fucking funny thing to me, uh, it's this sort of like mass hysteria that's happening within like the CIA and shit regarding like Cuba. It's more just fucking anti Cuba psychosis, United States anti Cuban psychosis, this Havana syndrome. I'm going to talk about that in the bonus episode. So, again, if you're not a patron already, I encourage you, please. To help support me, but it also gives you more good stuff to consume. Uh, go to patreon.com slash that thing with James, just five bucks, and you get a whole fucking month of new episodes every week, except for m- possibly next week, but uh, access to all the other bonus episodes for just five dollars for a whole fucking month, a whole month, just five bucks. That's it. That's change you stumble across in the uh, parking lot of the grocery store. So stick around. Patreon.com slash that thing with James. Thank you for tuning in. I love you. And I hope to see you on the premium side. Bye.